Ann Wheeler and her husband Tom do a thriving business at the Hogback Trading Post in Waterflow, New Mexico. It was founded by Tom's family, who were Mormon pioneers, in 1871 and is the oldest continuously family-owned trading post in the United States. Ann, tell us how long your family's been in the business. Well, the trading post was started in 1871. My husband is the fourth generation in his family to be in the business. Uh, it's uh, something that they've uh, always enjoyed and always loved doing, working with the Navajo people. And he's, he was raised in this area and has always grown up with the Navajo people. And so he's uh, very familiar with their customs and, and with the people and the way they think and what they believe. And you've always been right in this location or Within nearby. about a mile of this area. His family came from, uh, I believe, Missouri and were Mormon pioneers to the Salt Lake Valley. And Brigham Young at that time sent a group of people down here to uh, settle in this area, and his family was among it. And they've always just been in this area. And you've moved from trading in old rugs, like the ones in the background, this beautiful eye-dazzler piece, into a transition uh, more for the floor. And now you're dealing in these beautiful modern rugs. Yes. What, what can you tell us about this, this piece? This is done by a woman whose name is Cora Caddy. She is about... Oh, late 50s, early 60s. She, this is a vegetal dye, completely vegetal dye, hand-spun rug. She Finally. uses all hand-spun wool, just an incredible piece. She's just a, a really fantastic weaver. All of her colors are vegetal. She is very creative and innovative in developing her color. She is willing to try anything that she thinks may develop a color. She's used rocks, she's used uh, different kinds of sand. She has a couple of colors, for instance, this color, this brown here, she uses coffee grounds. This and, in here. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. this light brown. And she has uh, two colors of brown that she gets from coffee grounds. One of them is from decaf coffee grounds, the other one <laughs> is from regular coffee grounds. She's a real experimentalist then. Yes, yeah, she is. We can see the relationship a little bit between these serrate diamonds here and the antique piece uh, up on the wall. But these beautiful, more modern, more contemporary colors. Yes, she, this is a wide ruins. The name of this rug, this pattern is a wide ruins. Characterized rug. by the, the banding and the large waving diamond figures. As well as the vegetal dye. That's All a, vegetable also dye. A part of the wide ruins rug is the vegetal colors in it. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Subtle but uh, very vibrant too. She uses, she, uh, she does, she's an incredible weaver, and she will bring us about, we get usually around five rugs like this from her a year, which is extremely unusual for someone who is doing vegetal dyes as well as spinning their own wool. But she has three sons that are grown that help her to dye the wool and spin the wool. She lives, it takes her four and a half hours to drive here. And so as she's, her son is driving her over here, she's sitting in the truck spinning her own wool. So yes. start to finish, it's really all her product. Mm -hmm. Magnificent. And uh, rugs at this level, we're dealing with, uh, with very valuable things. Yes, these type of rugs, people are investing in, same as they would art. And, and it's a financial investment. And this, this rug would be one that you would hang on your wall. You would not want to put I was going to ask floor. you that. You're not going to yes. use this as a rug. No, I how about, wouldn't. How about the, the, uh, the black and white and brown piece we have here? This is a four-in-one, and it's done by a lady named Shirley Lopez. She lives out south of Bloomfield at Nagizi, and she, she is also a very, very talented weaver. And she's exceptional in the fact that she can do a rug like this in about three weeks' time. But she starts from the time she gets up in the morning until the time she goes to bed at night, she is sitting weaving. So she's she, not, she's not uh, producing her own wool, as well. No, this uh, is all commercial wool. She does not do any hand spinning of her wool at so all. So that speeds up, speeds up her process considerably. Yes. She doesn't have to spend the time. Yes. Now, you called it a four-in-one. Yes, this is one rug that has four complete designs in it. 
three two gray hill designs and then this design is a classical tease and mostly natural wool then the natural sheep yeah this, sheep's wool the, in varying colors yes the only color that uh, is dyed at all is the black and the natural color of the wool as it comes off of a sheep is not a true black it's kind of a dark chocolate brown so in order to get the black they do use a dye tell us about the prices well we have rugs that range anywhere from about a hundred dollars to six thousand dollars in the store and you can spend as much as thirty thousand dollars on a rug if you'd like for instance this processed wool rug the foreign one is twenty four hundred dollars and the vegetal type dye rug is forty eight hundred dollars twice as much yes but well worth it yes it is they're premium quality rugs there's one other thing I'd like the viewers to see and that's that old loom that you showed me certainly can we, can yeah. we take a look this rug was given to my husband by a weaver whose name was Daisy Peshlakai. She was approximately 90 years old when she died. She had always sold her rugs to the wheelers. When she died, this rug was on the loom that, and she was working on it. Her family took it off and brought it in and gave it to my husband. So we had this old style loom out of the cedar post constructed to put the loom, to put the rug back on just like it was when she had died. This is a sand painting design. It's a Mother Earth Father Sky design. This is the Father Sky and the rainbow yay goes the entire outside of the rug and across the end. She didn't finish getting the Mother Earth on there. So this would have continued around to complete the design of the yay figure. Yes. Now these are based on the traditional sand paintings, the religious paintings. Yes. And are they not prohibited now? Are they... The medicine men have asked the weavers not to weave them because they are part of their religion and they don't want these designs put into a permanent medium. Uh, they are told not to weave them because they may be subject to blindness, death, or sickness and so most of the weavers will not weave these anymore thanks very much Anne. you're certainly welcome